Brendan and I heart, J. Michael Tatum! Oh, I'm gonna sit next to him, I'm all excited. Alexis Tipton! Alexis! And last but in no means least, Christopher Wegham! Internet. Hello, Internet. <laughs> All right. I am super excited to be here with everybody. You're take your masks off. Show your lovely faces, voice actors. This, this is when I get really upset, is when the voice actors look really good. You're supposed to be like dumpy, lumpy. <laughs> what? But you guys are so gorgeous. Look at you guys. Look at We're all the from people. a very strange place. <laughs> yeah. oh my God. Um, I, Thank you. I am making sure that the HR is going to have a talk with me after this. Yes. <laughs> Makes me look no. dumpy, lumpy. Got it. No, you know, but you're not. That's the point. Oh. You guys are shit. Yeah. They're all young and looking. It's not fair. So let's start. Uh, you know, it's been weird the last couple of years, and we're glad to see you guys out. Uh, but how has working from home remotely? Because I think of all the people in Hollywood that's least affected, I think it's voice actors, because a lot of you have home studios and such. How did that work out for you? And anybody can grab a hold of that I, question. I think all of us are now angry at landscaping. <laughs> yes. Lawnmowers, you guys? These How's blowers the are the natural weird? enemy of every voice actor. In the middle of some dramatic line, and then the back, you're like, then you hear like, yeah. I also have a personal vendetta against Mustangs now. Yes. Yes. <laughs> They'll be like, okay, I'm gearing up for this really intense scene. Director's like gone through what's gonna happen with me. I'm like, okay, I'm ready. All right, I'm in the emotional. Marr, sorry guys, there's a car and it's idling outside my apartment. Great, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, it's, yeah. Thank you. Do you start to give your neighbor's dog suspicious yet evil leers because you're like, is that the one that's barking all the time? You get a filter for that, you copy paste it, you're like, never again, Fido. <laughs> We've got you. The algorithm has it. <laughs> It's, it's crazy to me that it doesn't matter when you go in the booth, no. there's going to be a leaf blower. Yes. Like, yes. A, you can do it at like 8, 9 p.m. at night. It's like, my neighbor is really leaf blowing his lawn at 9 p.m. That's his favorite. On a Tuesday. His favorite is that. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah, they, I think he just finds out, when is their schedule? Uh, they're CC'd on your yeah. schedule. And they know, oh, I'll start about 20 minutes beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or my favorite is when they start like two hours beforehand and you're like sitting there nervously waiting to see if they'll stop. Like, will this be over by the time oh, I have it? Oh, yeah, the fake out. Like, yeah. it's quiet, it's quiet. It's a so, lie. <laughs> wait, it's garbage day. Again. Uh, <laughs> Did we just pick up the garbage tape? yesterday? Oh, I'm recording, so they're back. <laughs> and apparently in LA, trucks only back up. No, I hear beep, beep, beep. I'm like, does no one just know what it is? That's what we've learned after moving here. Yeah. And also, my, like favorite GTA. Is the, my favorite is the new hybrid vehicles with electronic cars have a noise. Oh, the like, mm -hmm. It sounds like someone far away on a highway. You're like, oh, I think I can hear the highway. No, it's my neighbor who happens to leave 15 times a day when it's recording day, backing up and doing so. Have we all heard the Amazon Prime delivery truck with its beep and it's like, <laughs> It sounds like it sounds like one of my French bulldogs. Like what is this? Yeah, Mr. Mr. Ice Cream Truck in December. Like they're just watching to see when I get in the booth. Oh, dude, this is my retirement plan. Is I am going to get like an anime themed ice cream truck in Texas. Because listen, guys, listen. You can just drive an ice cream truck any time of the year in Texas. Like, it's literally December in Texas, and there's an ice cream truck yep. in our neighborhood right yep. now. I'm like, this This is the plan, this is the move. And then just like, I'm not talking about copyright infringement, but just kind of make some of the items sound a little bit anime-ish. Well, it's, it's an ice cream truck, so it's like the clink, 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 they can't, they can't. So you'll have like, My Hero Macadamia? Kinda, kinda, oh! kinda. Gotta be a My thing. work here is done. Thank you very much. For it. You say run with it. Better copyright that right now. No, it's not Hero Two. It's Hero Two Popsicles. Yes. Popsicles. Right. Just close enough. Yeah. Yeah. Popsicles. 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 Popsic
My hero <laughs> magic. <laughs> and it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. Well, that actually leads me into a legitimate question that has is food related. Because, um, Michael, we haven't seen each other in a couple of years, and Alexis, uh, and it's really nice to meet new folks, but when last we spoke, uh, Mac, uh, My Hero Academia was blowing up. And now, it's so massive that, like, I'm just walking through the spectrum in Irvine, and I go into the macaroon shop, and all it is is an advertisement for the movies and for the show, and it's, it's crazy. So, what do you think is due to the explosion? Because it was already popular when we talked, and now it's gotten out of hand. <laughs> well, I think the movies have helped a lot. Have you guys, anybody seen the movie? Yeah. We so, were in it. Yeah, me, me and Rico were in it too. You want to you do our part of the movie? Yeah, so you guys are familiar. I, I play Mirio Togata in the show. And I'm Isaiah. But this is exactly, this is a full reading of what... Of Are you going to stand up for this? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. All right. okay so guys, this is uh, uh, Mirio and Aizawa in the latest My Hero Academia movie. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys. Inspired. Just so inspired. Thank you so much. It's uncanny, the likeness. It's <laughs> crazy, I know. Man, you nailed that too. Do you practice that? If you were tired, I got it. You weren't nominated for that? <laughs> you weren't nominated for that? But I think I the answer Listen, is, yeah. Wait, you can't talk about that. A lot of, <laughs> these movies really have uh, increased awareness a lot. You know, like I, I've, I talk to a lot of people now that are like, I wasn't really even watching the show, and my friend took me to this movie, and I love the movie, and now I'm, you know, lost my life because I'm just binging five seasons of this show. But how interesting to like come at it from the movie perspective, see that, and for all y'all that have seen the show, they're like working backwards. They gotta like, so who's this back go? You know what I mean? They're like, well, let me tell you. I mean, I think I think quarantine helped a lot too because we all had so much more time to watch anime. Like I, I met a lot of people this weekend who were like, yeah, my friend got me into this, or my mother got me into this, or my child got me into this, or whatever. And so people just had so much time to sit down and binge watch anime, which is awesome. And I think a lot of people discovered new shows, and then people who you know might have fallen behind on their favorite shows got to catch up, and you know, we were all at home for a year. Yeah. And, and I think it by also... the way, it's so nice to be at a convention. Yes, it's so nice to be out here. Like, there's so many people here, and it's great. <laughs> and you're all wearing masks. I know. Yeah, oh, look at that, yeah. Less. And not a nose to be seen. Good job. Above the, the nose. Very well done, folks. Ida's very proud of all of you. Ida, Ida is. <laughs> Can I just say, getting to play that character makes it really fun at cons. If someone's not wearing a mask, I'm like, put on your mask! <laughs> He did the thing, he did the thing, he eated me. Um, he eated. <laughs> I've been eaten. I've been eaten. I've been eaten. Yeah. Uh, I think it also helps the show's blown up because it's good. It's really, really good and it stayed good. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's such a pleasure to, to work on it long term and see the show evolve because we've all been in projects that start strong and maybe don't end as strong as they began. Um, you know, it's the business, but it's really nice that we've been on this thing now for six. It's oh five, six forever. years. And it's still just as fresh and good and interesting, and it's not afraid to go places to really challenge uh, the audience. And it's rewarding. So it's really, it's helpful that it's great. You know, it was, it's really, it really offers a big return on your investment as an audience, I think. Because all the characters have just changed and grown so much uh, over the course of the show. And it's, it's great. I'm, I'm always looking forward to seeing where it's going to go next, because they just, they, they don't seem to ever run out of ideas. Like, it's amazing. Thanks, Harakoshi. Yeah. <laughs> well, that leads to my next question. You guys are doing great beating me softballs, because this is great. Um, so the manga is literally the same storyline as the anime, but the manga is farther ahead. So, do you, as actors, binge ahead to, even if you're no longer here, uh, Brendan, uh, sorry for your loss. Uh, <laughs> Will there, Will there be a flashback? Will there be a flashback? Yeah, is that, are you guys looking ahead to see where your characters are, or are you just yes. going to wait for the script? <laughs> Absolutely! I can't help it. Well, you guys, you read everything. I read it all. I read everything. And see, I'm the opposite. I, I can't. I don't want to know anything. What? Because I like I to. I don't want to know anything. I don't like crazy. Because, it, because as an actor, I like being very fresh and very present. And if I if I have an idea of what's going to happen, I get in my head about how to perform it. 
and so the way, but like, the, but like, the way they perform it, and um, and so I don't want to know. I want to discover it for the first time when I'm in the booth. Same. But, but like, but like we, we we watch Hamlet. Hamlet. Hamlet dies, you guys. But like, okay. Hey, but but still. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. <laughs> but like, anyway. There's children But like, here, we're still man. telling the story, man. Anyway, no, I mean, I who, here, who here has read the manga of My Hero Academia? <laughs> Okay. You hear that woo? Yeah, yeah. That woo. Okay. <laughs> I heard yeah, no, good on you. I'm not saying you shouldn't read the manga. No, like, no. I go back and try to read everything, but I don't want to read, I never want to read ahead as an actor. Yeah. Like, once I've done a scene, yeah. then I go back and read the manga to relive it. But I don't want to know what happens. It was a process I, question. Yeah, it wasn't a... Yeah, yeah. I, I, feel like, I feel like as an actor, I get a far... Uh, the director gets a far better performance out of me if I'm not, if I don't know what's fresh meant to. So like the whole stain art thing, which is a big thing for Ida, like I didn't know any of that was coming and so I had all these complicated emotions when I would turn to Colleen to be like, I'm doing what? Um, Ida is doing that? And she's like, yeah, and that energy really lent itself to, to the really darker moments and I, had I known what was going to happen ahead of time, I think I would have tried to craft the performance in a way that, that wouldn't have been Please don't. Yeah. <laughs> So Rico's upset because he's lost his quirk. Spoilers! Spoilers! We are in a giant hole. Let me see. So, so I was allegedly. Not, I'm in the middle. Aisle 500. Hey, yeah. If I know about it, they know about it. I, 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 well, I enjoy your academia. I am not. So I'm, I'm kind of in the, the middle. Thing. So I know it. They know it. Batman I'm in the middle ahead. between Rico and Michael. So I was not reading the manga at all until I got the chance to start directing in season five. And then I was like, okay, I cannot, I cannot just like fake this anymore. Like I have to know what the hell is going on like in the show. And it wasn't really until then, because I, I feel the same way as Michael with wanting to be able to sort of like react to the moment. But at the same time, when it's, when it's like, we've got to make character decisions based on stuff that happened last season, or something like you've got to know what the heck is going on at that point. I adore. So I see both. I see both. I sides. adore meditating on it, you guys. Like I don't know about y'all, but like I who have their own head canon of all the things that can happen in the show. Like when I read it and I saw all the things that happened with Mirio, man, I thought of like yes, a thousand different ways that I could craft it. But after I run all those plays, like when Colleen and I were in there, I'm like, what you want? Relaxed, ready, like that. But that's me. That's like my thing. Like I love, I love the rehearsal process because we never get that chance typically. Yeah. Like you're just like, oh, by the way, you're dying. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> So part of my so part of my process, at least uh, through the really the more intense Ida arcs, uh, where we we have a friend that does read the manga religiously, and would I would go to him and be like, all right, don't give anything away, but just give me context in the most abstract way possible, so that I kind of know like what Chris is saying, like I, I need you know to kind of know what what's at stake sure. before I'm in the booth. And so he would tell me, he would like, he would, the challenge, he'd be like, okay, I'm gonna try to write this down without spoiling anything. And so it was kind of an exercise for him as well. So I would have an idea of what was going on, but only an idea, but it wouldn't, the actual beats, I wouldn't know. Sure, sure. And then just, I yeah. I, I, that, and that's just me personally. I love the experience of being so fresh in the booth and just having it slap you in the face. There's something so validating about yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm on, uh, like Brandon, I'm on a, uh, an app called TikTok. Have you guys heard of that at all? It's like got a clock on it, or anyway. Uh, it's impossible to live in a world without spoilers if you're on yeah. social media. Oh That's God. the reality of social media. Is like I, I will do my best to not know what's going on, and then I'm just scrolling, and there's a really hilarious TikTok that starts off, and then the ending of it is like the spoiler of a show that I'm watching. Like what? It's a total bait and switch sometimes. So I'm like, I'm doing my best not to find out this stuff sometimes, and then it's, it's just hard. right it's there. It's hard, you know. It's like on TikTok. Yeah, it's like a Rick Troll kind of situation. Yeah. Not a Rick Roll, a Rick Troll. A Rick they're putting troll. stuff out, and then at the end, troll. they're spoiling it on purpose. That's the trolling part. But it's just like a Rick Roll, Rick and you're watching troll. something, and at There's the end... There's a special place for those people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's called the internet. Oh. I was going to say Bakersfield, but that's just... Not... <laughs> Anyways, there's like five people from Bakersfield. They're like, they're going to meet me in the back, and they're going to go, yeah, you're right. Um, <laughs> it's, yeah. Bakersfield's a wonderful place if you're running out of gas. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> so you've got gas stations, you've got to go, we're ready to go. Um, so let's get into your, each one of your characters so we get a chance because I really want to talk about it. So we're gonna, I'm going to start because it was alphabetical uh, and I have a list here. But uh, Rico, you, yes. are, you have what I, my favorite one because it's a French name, Le Million. Le Million. Which, Correct. Or Ramirio. Yes. yes <laughs> which, which means the million, but there's a little bit of a, a translation issue. Some people think it means you're only going to help a million people, which means that a million and one, you're out of luck. Sorry, I'm done. <laughs> or you're going to start at a million. 
You're gonna, you're gonna have at least a million. So oh, he's yeah, at least, at least, definitely is the thing. I actually had this idea uh, for those of you. Spoiler alert! See how I did that? No, okay, okay, anyway, like in the, I'm joking. Now, uh, Mirio saved one. So now he's nine 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 man. Like that's, that's the thing. But it's like the sweetest, the sweetest thing to, to look at it. Like I know that I want to just be a hero and save people. But he, Mirio, is very very focused. Very a uh, 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 lot of conviction in this person. If you're familiar with the overhaul fight, and it's like. You're powerless, says my buddy Kellen Goff, and it's like, I'm not powerless, I am still Lamillion, as he throws his subordinate Chrono at, who throws their own guy at, like, that's, that's BA, dude, that's awesome, like, and, and that kind of conviction that it takes to, in a world where your quirk is supposed to be what makes you valuable, Mirio clearly shows that that is not the case, it is about what you are about. What is your conviction? What is your focus? Like, what do you, what are you here to do? And he knows clearly, I'm here to be a hero. He's chanting to himself, he keeps saying, uh, you know, watch your opponent carefully. It doesn't change, by the way, actor thing, you know repeated text. When you get repeated text in a script, pro tip, uh, it's either the person's crazy, right? It's like, you know, what am I doing, what am I doing, what am I doing, what am I doing? What am I doing? Or, uh, or they're like a rookie, right? And Sir Night Eye tells Mirio, watch your opponent carefully, analyze his moves, uh, act fast. This is like a senior in high school. This kid is trying to like, he's following play by play what Sir has told him. And it is the sweetest thing, because when I got the opportunity to say that line, I was like, oh, he's that senior in high school. He's like, back shoulder, faith, bah, bah, do it. Because I'm committed and I trust my teacher. I trust my best friend, I'm a cheeky. I trust my dad, I played Mirio's dad, Mirio. Like, he's got a great support system. And because of that, he can move with such commitment, you guys. Like, it's, he is unstoppable. And so, I forgot the question. <laughs> there wasn't one, I just said the name of your character and you went off. Oh, man. Which Lamillion. Is, but but all it shows it, how much you love your character, so that's great. All of it to say about Lamillion, you guys, like, uh, he, you know, you have to set a goal, right? And he's like, a million sounds good. We'll start there. That's like, that's awesome. <laughs> So then I'll move on to Brandon, because you've been yeah. quiet, and I want to get you involved. Oh, so. thank you, thank you. You're uh, the only real royalty in the show as Sir. Sir. Uh, yeah. Sir. Is there, I, there's not another I Sir, right? I don't know if he is formally no, uh, we're gonna say of the is. Order of the British Empire. It's but. canon. It's canon. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it's canon. <laughs> I, don't know. I, haven't, I haven't read that. I'm not sure. But I do know, I, I feel like Sir Nidai, the, the lesson of Sir Nidai, in, in a nutshell, is to not be too married to an idea that you have in the face of new information. Yeah. Which I think is a great lesson. Absolutely. In, in these trying times. <laughs> you know, I just think it's a, good, it's a good lesson. You know, like people can get very, very, in all contexts, right? If you have an idea and you're like, this is the way it is, and this is the way it always is and will always be, you know, you can limit yourself. And I really think you can limit yourself from seeing the bigger picture, and that's exactly what happens in this show. I won't give it away, but, you know, that's, uh, keep an eye out for that. <laughs> so, uh, how do you feel about your character's, uh, progress? It's so sad. <laughs> but how does it feel as an actor when you see sure. that, you're like, oh, you're dying, sad. Sad. But <laughs> I'm sad. But are you, like, hoping, like, like he was saying, flashbacks, or... Because like, oh, no maybe. one's ever dead. No one's maybe, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, really, what I would love, in my... If I could just blue sky engineer for a second, I would really love a movie exploring when Sir Night Eye and All Might were working together. When he was his sidekick. You know, that would be like, ooh, ooh. Ultimate buddy cop. Like, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, it'd be a great buddy oh cop my, movie. Oh, my, come on. Like, yeah. Just chasing him down. <laughs> you can't do that. You'll kill yourself. <laughs> I watched the heck out of that. Yeah, Well, and Alexis, you, your character has really had a quite an arc. So several of them. You've you're, you're had a, a quite a run. Yeah. What, 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 what connects you with your character? So here's the thing I always find difficult with dubbing. Mm -hmm. Because you already have an established script. So it's not like a Pixar movie where they can kind of tweak it to you and, and you can have input. But then also it's already been done by someone in Japanese, so inflections are kind of already established. Yes. Yeah. So how do you put your, your stamp on it? How do we know that 
besides it just sounds like Alexis? How do we know that <laughs> that's Alexis? She's because every actor puts a piece of themselves in every character they do, even if gosh. it's not a massive piece of themselves. So what if, what's your story? Yeah, yeah, oh my gosh. Um, well, I'm just giving you time to think as your shocked oh, face was no, telling me. It was existential. I know. How do you do it? Tell us, Alexis, how do you do it? Hey, I can do the academia nuts. I can do the existential I, stuff, man. I got, I got levels. <laughs> Um, Hatsume is so interesting, um, you know, she's so, I always say like, you know, the show is about people who have quirks, and Mei is just very quirky, um, and she does have a quirk, but I, I love that she's just so like in and out of the show, like I wish we could see more of her, but at the same time I feel like it's totally character appropriate to never know when the hurricane's coming, so to speak, and then she just rushes in and she usually has something, you know, worthwhile to add to the plot that's going on, um, if, you know, for no other reason than just to be funny. But what I love about her is that, like, I am a chronic perfectionist. I don't know if anyone else struggles with that, but I feel you. Um, and so with May, it's very inspiring because, you know, she's very experimental and she's very intelligent and capable and designs a lot of really, really amazing, truly useful inventions, but she explodes things a lot and she messes up and so I, I love her whole failure is the mother of invention line and what I love about her is that she can look at something and not look at it as a, as a failure with weight to it it's oh okay I learned something from that well now I can take that and and I can, I can apply it to the next thing and then I can move on and I, I love that ability to adapt and that ability to not judge yourself for failures um, so I just find her very inspiring for that, um, and I would, I would like to be more like her in that regard, <laughs> not beat myself up so bad when I feel like I've messed up. Um, but yeah, so I, in terms of inflection, she, it's one of those things where in the, in the Japanese, her inflections are something that doesn't really translate well to the English language. And so uh, Colleen, uh, Clinton Beard, who cast me and, and direct, has directed most of my hero, um, is when she had me audition for that role, she had me in mind, and so we kind of played with a couple different things in the audition. She gave me, you know, oh, let's try like uh, a speech impediment. Let's try something like this. Let's try something like that. And so we um, we kind of worked on something that just made her sound a little different and slightly detached. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I I feel like May is me when I've had too much caffeine. So um, I definitely have to be caffeinated to play her. Uh, and by the time we're done, I've had so much fun, but I'm just like, oh, I'm tired, I gotta sit down. Um, so yeah, I, I think that answers your question. Sure. sure. I'll say, <laughs> yeah, it was a very answer. Yeah. Uh, cool. Cool. <laughs> well, unfortunately, I got the one minute mark. So you, we had you with your TikTok, uh, yeah. and Michael, we can't keep quiet anyways. Sure. So I feel we gotta go ahead and establish it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, will you please give it up for J. Michael Tatum. <laughs> Rico, Rico Fajardo, Can I do, can I do one Wega. thing before we go? Yes. Guys, one thing. Can we get one big plus ultra before we go? Yeah. One, two, three. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. We'll be at our table. We'll be at our table signing. Come see us.